Welcome to a new vlog, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're gonna start with these items. I have a stepper motor here, one of these uh, flexible couplers and some belts and uh, threaded pulleys for these. I'm not building anything special here, in fact uh, I would expect this uh, cheap motor from AliExpress to be pretty low quality and lack in performance but I don't have any good sized stepper motor like these uh, NEMA 17s here in the lab so if I want to test let's say stepper motor driver or if I want to build some kind of strange uh, test fixture I want to keep one of these uh, motors around just in case so that's the reason I uh, picked one up along with these um, accessories the motor also came with these uh, with this cable which breaks out the uh, JST connector to a uh, 0.1 inch header unfortunately they didn't seem to include uh, any of those um, clips uh, you know to uh, connect uh, the belt so I'll have to look on AliExpress and get a set of those uh, clips as well this video is sponsored by jlcpcb.com who in the past months upgraded their manufacturing line so they are now offering 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper than any other place so it's definitely worth checking them out. My next item is a set of color tubes for antenna protection. These are about 3.3 millimeters on the outside and uh, something like under 2 millimeters internal diameter. In the RC world you often have these uh, thin wire dipole antennas and you often have high speed crashes. So in order to protect these uh, fragile antennas we 3D print some fixtures and then we use some of this uh, tubing to protect the antenna. Now another reason why you might want to use this rigid tubing is to hold the uh, antenna upright or in a certain position and orientation respective to your model for best radiation pattern. So I just got a set of these uh, colored ones and uh, I got four in here. These should last me uh, a while. My next item is a um, roll of enameled wire. It's uh, 0 0.13 millimeter uh, width and the roll is 100 grams. This stuff is uh, really really useful for doing um, small board level repairs. If a thin track needs a repair or you accidentally messed up your uh, prototype board layout you can do some mods uh, using this copper wire. It's thin, flexible and insulated by the enamel but you can burn away the enamel at the ends and uh, solder it nicely even to the uh, smallest BGA uh, pads. I guess uh, 0 0.13 millimeter would be close to AWG 36 size for reference. Unfortunately, they do a really shitty job on, on packaging. Um, it looks like it's, it's a mess in here and um, it might get tangled when I try to use it, but still uh, there will be plenty of wire left in here. And since I'll only be using this in small chunks, it should last me for years. Next up, an item that you've no doubt seen before here on the channel. It's one of these uh, pin removal uh, tool sets. And I've had one of these uh, previously and I used it a couple of times as you can see, but on a recent job uh, which involved removing some pins from an ECU connector uh, slash wiring harness, I kind of damaged uh, the tool. Uh, there the pins were just not cooperating, they didn't want to release from the connector. So I used some force which bent these uh, needles. Luckily, these are very cheap, so I just ordered a uh, replacement set, which kind of seems to have uh, less tools in the set than my old one had. But uh, that's okay, I can combine the two. So do you have... Uh, Similar stories you can share in the comments. Are these uh, VW ECU pins generally hard to remove or did I use the wrong technique? Uh, have you experienced the same pain when removing pins from ECU connectors? Because in my case it literally took one hour to remove four pins and all of this in a very uncomfortable position.
My next item comes in this rather professional looking box, which uh, you don't see often with these kind of tools coming from AliExpress. This is a uh, battery charging and activation tool. It's tailored towards uh, cell phone repair shops. And I guess the idea here is to have a bunch of different uh, battery connectors so you can connect phone batteries directly to this board to charge them or to activate them. And by uh, activation, I believe they mean a situation where you have deeply discharged the battery, which will not take a charge anymore from the phone. So I think this board has a feature where it will charge even those deeply discharged batteries. The way I see things, the phone will not charge such a battery as a protection feature. So I'm not sure it's wise to defeat that protection with something like that and uh, charge it. But it seems that they're doing it with this tool. So what you get in, in the box is uh, this board and a couple of cables. This one has a four millimeter banana jacks, so you can plug this micro USB directly into a power supply. I kind of like the feel of these uh, cables. They feel like they're silicon cables. So I have a couple of uh, old uh, batteries here and I want to test the board. So let me figure out which connector goes where. So I've plugged in this uh, iPhone 5 battery. The blue light came on and I believe this is the uh, current that it's currently charging this battery and the battery is getting warm. I don't like that. I'm also not sure of the voltage of the battery because it's not showing me that. But I can definitely feel the battery getting warm and I don't think it's safe to charge this battery at 2 amps if this is for example a deeply discharged battery. I really don't like that. Let's see if this button does anything. So I'm pressing the button but it seems nothing is happening. Maybe that's only working when a battery is, uh, is deeply discharged. So I've uh, disconnected the battery. I'm really not sure what to think of this tool. I mean, yeah, it could be useful if you're working, for example, on a phone which has problems charging the battery and you know that battery is fine. You can plug it to one of these boards and charge it so you can test something on the phone until you repair the charging circuitry but I wouldn't use it to revive some old battery because as you saw it was charging it at 2 amps and I can already feel it getting warm so that's not okay that's a potentially dangerous situation to uh, charge deeply discharged uh, lipo batteries they could potentially catch fire under that, those uh, conditions I mean one thing that would have been nice is the ability to uh, select the charging current like only to have like four steps which you could select with a, uh, a switch like to have 500 milliamps 1 amp 1.5 amps and 2 amps would have been really nice but like this like it's handling the situation it's pumping uh, 2 amps straight from the start i don't think that's okay for these batteries for those who might be interested the chips don't have any numbers on them we have Q2 here. This one might be a uh, transistor. I don't know. This one might be a microcontroller. And in here we might have an op amp to amplify the signal from um, a current shunt resistor. But I'm not sure on that. By taking a closer look at this activation switch, it seems that all it does is to connect the um, charging voltage to the battery positive. So it, it kind of bypasses a possible uh, lithium charging circuit which is up here and uh, connects your battery directly to the uh, charging voltage so that you can raise its, its voltage just enough for the charger to detect and uh, charge it further. So I think that's what this uh, activation button does. It's like a by bypass for the charging circuit. What I can uh, tell you is that uh, you will find several versions of these. Some have different connectors for different phones. Some might have or might lack additional features. So check uh, the uh, product description before ordering to see if uh, this is the one you want. My next item is a uh, small cleaning brush. I found this and uh, I thought I'd give it a try. It has this uh, funky design. It comes with this um, uh, sock. Oh, I don't know how you would call uh, this attachment. But I have to fit it somehow. 
on the part there you go so the sock fits in here on top and then you can use it like this to to clean some really tight spaces in your car the ventilation slots for example because uh, dust will gather in there you also get like a uh, nylon brush on the other end but i particularly like the idea of being able to clean the the ventilation slots with uh, this end of the brush um, unfortunately this is going to get dirty pretty soon it's like a small surface and i'm not sure if you can get any uh, replacement uh, socks for the tool but I thought I'd just uh, give it a try and see how it uh, works for me my next item is a programmer slash download interface for the Texas Instruments CC25 uh, series of chips the ones which support Bluetooth or Zigbee now here I have the uh, CC2531 model of the dongle uh, the uh, CC2531 supports Zigbee applications so that's what I'm uh, interested in when you order this you have the option of either choosing a uh, 2531 or a 2540 model the boards look identical the chips are different however between the two models and I would imagine they contain different firmware the seller says in the description that you should head to uh, TI to uh, grab their software so I would assume this is some kind of a clone of the real tool from Texas Instruments and it works with their uh, software also got this uh, small adapter board now I don't have uh, uh, time to install the required software to test all of this now but I hope everything works as expected when I'll need it to uh, program some Zigbee modules next up I have a set of these uh, RGB LEDs these are the digital ones and the part number should be WS2812B and the package size is uh, 3535 with white plastic there are a few varieties available for these digital RGB LEDs some are based on a different controller with a different uh, part number that starts with SK they might have uh, different uh, timing requirements between the chips but I think they use the same protocol like I mentioned these are 3535 package which are slightly smaller than the usual 50-50 package that you see everywhere so this uh, makes them better suited for small PCBs and modules but they still have a major drawback as far as I know these digital RGB LEDs are rated for 5 volts so in theory you shouldn't use them on 3.3 volts or you might observe unexpected uh, behavior uh, the thing is if you try them on 3.3 volts it's likely that they'll work on your small batch of modules however I'm not sure it would be wise to build something that drives these at 3.3 volts at a large scale in general you do not want to use chips outside their specified range if you want things to be stable and reliable so do you happen to know of a digital RGB LED that is rated for 3.3 volts let me know in the comments below I would also be interested in knowing if you used or seen smaller digital RGB LEDs because uh, currently the smallest I could find are these in uh, 3535 package my next item is uh, this small flashlight but this is not an ordinary white LED flashlight this one has a new V LED as you can see I've turned it on and uh, it's quite bright the specs said uh, 395 nanometers I don't know what the output power is but here is another feature the flashlight is zoomable so you can concentrate the beam should you require that and I think I need that for the purpose I got it now regarding the batteries you can use AA or uh, 14500 lithium cells like I'm using here and the flashlight has uh, three modes it has a uh, high low and flashing I don't particularly like the fact that it has multiple operating uh, modes uh, I can probably make use of the high and the low mode but certainly not the flashing mode now I think it's useful to keep such a flashlight in the electronics lab I'll give you two uh, use case scenarios where you might need it though I'm sure there are other as others as well first you could use it to cure some uh, UV sensitive uh, solder mask or adhesive 
like this stuff. This is great for doing board level repairs and then you can cover the, the repair with some of this solder mask and cure it with this UV flashlight and it will uh, harden and act as an excellent mask for that repair. And also certain types of uh, fluxes from uh, Amtec, let me grab this one, uh, they have an added marker uh, in the composition that's a UV marker and it's uh, clearly shown in this picture where the uh, flux uh, tube on the right is a genuine Amtec unit with UV marker. You can clearly see the, the gel flux reacting to the UV light. Next is a set of crimp connectors. These are copper lugs or so they claim. Uh, and uh, unfortunately the locking mechanism for this uh, plastic box already broke. Now this kit holds connectors for wire sizes from 6 millimeters up to 25 millimeters. So it's only a 60 pieces set but it's uh, pretty heavy because uh, the connectors are big and thick. So I would assume that's the main reason it only has 60 pieces in this uh, kit. So you would use these connectors for high current situations where you need a sturdy connection. Now ideally you would have a special tool for crimping these. Uh, I don't have one so I just crimp them by squishing with uh, a big pair of pliers. But I would assume the proper tool for crimping these is pretty beefy. I found something like this on AliExpress which might do the job but I'm not going to order one considering I'm not going to use it very often and it's not cheap uh, either. But I'm sure these connectors will be handy in the lab. And the uh, last item in today's video, I have a set of uh, SOAP 8 socket adapters. Now one of these is uh, 150 mil spacing, I think it's the blue one and the green one is uh, 200 mil spacing uh, between the pins because uh, SOP packages usually come in these two sizes for pin spacing. So you might have a uh, flash memory that you want to read or program. It's really easy to do it with something like this. You pop the chip in the socket. Let me show you with uh, an example chip here. So let's say this is my uh, example chip. All you have to do is uh, pop the chip in there. And now the chip is uh, safely connected in there and you can just attach DuPont uh, wires to these and connect it to your programmer and it will be much easier to read or program a chip this way than uh, losing time for attaching uh, soldering wires to the pin. Now the same can be done for programming small microcontrollers prior to soldering them to a board. These uh, sockets are fairly inexpensive so it's always a good idea to keep a set of these for that pesky motherboard repair or hack where you need to read and then uh, reflash a certain chip. That was